Hola, mi clase. 15-1, two-way frequency tables. So I can instruct, construct and interpret two-way frequency tables. So the key terms are frequency. This is just how often something happens. So it's the number of times an event occurs. Um, right? We know that frequency just means like how often it happens. A two-way table shows the frequencies of data that is categor categorized in two ways. Um, so it's called two-way table because it's a table that is taking data and splitting it and talk, showing it how it's categorized in two different ways. And you'll see what that means here in a second. Um, and then relative frequency is the ratio of the number of times an event occurs compared to the total number of events. So relative meaning how are they related or connected. Um, and so that's why we want to find that ratio. All right, so we're going to determine whether there's an association between a specific set of events. And so here we have a two-way table. It's 100 teenagers were polled about whether they were required to do chores and whether they had a curfew. So it was like a two-question thing, and it was the same 100 kids. So there, we want to know if there's an association between having a curfew and having to do chores. So this is the way it was, that's what we meant by two categories. So the first category they asked about was chores, and the second category they asked about was, was a curfew. So this is the total, the 100. And then what they did is they asked, do you have a curfew? And so they asked out of the 100, 32 of them had a curfew and 68% of them did not, or not percent, sorry, 68 of them did not have a curfew. Then they asked them, do you have chores? 20 of them said they had chores and 20 of 80 of them said they did not have chores. So then out of the, the 20, they split it into, hey, you have a curfew and chores, 16 of them had a curfew and chores. They fit into both these categories. And then vice versa, um, you know, no curfew, no chores, 64 of them fit both those categories, okay? So you can see we have a total of all of them, a total of just chores, a total of no chores, a total of no curfew, a total of curfew, and then we also categorize them with the two together. So is there an association having a curfew and having no chores? So having um, no ch a curfew, if we look at a curfew, that's 32 of them. Um, right, so having a curfew, 32 of them of 100, okay? And having to do chores, that was 20 of them, 20 people had to do chores out of 100, okay? So we need to first figure out what is um, just having chores, okay? So it says between having a curfew and having to do chores. So we're gonna first go find out the ratio, the relative frequency of having chores. So we're gonna find the relative frequency, I'm just gonna put RF of chores. And so that's that ratio of 20 out of 100 which we can reduce down to two out of 10. And then we actually, as we reviewed, we can make this into a percentage by taking 10 divided into two. That's where I'm gonna get two tenths. And then we take our decimal and times it by 100 to get the percentage. So it's a 20% likelihood of you um, having chores, right? So 20% of them have chores. So then we want to find the relative frequency of having to do chores and having a curfew. Okay. So having chores and a curfew would be here. So we're going to find the relative frequency of chores and curfew. So that's 16, and we're going to actually compare it to curfew, which is 32, okay? Because we want to know, is there a relationship between having chores and having a curfew? And so we looked at chores, it's 20%. We're going to look at curfew and chores, and we have to compare it to the chores, I mean, to the curfew, because that's kind of the relationship we're trying to find. 
And so if I take 16 over 32, that actually reduces to a half, which we know is 5 tenths. I times that by 100, and I get that it's 50%. Okay? So if we compare these relative frequencies, students who have a curfew are more likely to then have chores, right? So students who have a curfew are more likely to then have chores. Um, so there is an association because people who have chores are just 20%, but people who have chores and a curfew is 50%. And that's a, a much bigger of a percentage. It's half the people would have a curfew and chores where just chores is 20%. So since this is a very high percentage, there is an association between having chores and a curfew because you're more likely to have a curfew if you have chores, okay? So that's kind of why we ch looked at just chores first because we wanna know is there a relationship between having a curfew and having to do chores. So chores was just 20%. So chores and a curfew compared to just curfew is 50%. So you are likely to have chores if you have a curfew, okay? So yes, there is a relationship or an association. Okay, and so the way we did this is we looked at this, the second one, what is the relationship of just having chores, and then we compared it to curfews, okay? So that's kind of the idea of how to do these associations. All right, so this is just a blank to a table of a survey of students, and we're going to practice how to fill it in. So it says, in a survey of 50 students, so there's my total, there's 50 students, 60% said they have a cat. Of the students who have a cat, 70% of them have a dog. Of the students who do not have a cat, 75% have a dog. Um, so here are the steps to do it. So it says enter the total number of students surveyed in the bottom right center of the table. So that's our total total. That's going to go here. So this is 50. 50 students total were um, surveyed. So now it says fill in the right column. Right column, these are the columns. This way is a column, right? Right column is here. And that's because it says 60% have cats. So 60% of 50 have cats. So in our review, we would need to change our percentage to a, de or to a decimal. We're going to move it over twice. And then remember, of means to multiply, and so we're going to times this by 50. So we definitely still want to keep our calculators handy to do these things. So I'm going to go 6 tenths or 60% times 50, and we get that there are 30 people that have a cat. Now, if 30 people have a cat, then 30 or 50, sorry, 50 minus 20, or 50 minus 30 will get me 20, and that will tell me how many don't have a cat. Okay? So that's how we can fill in the whole right column is because it tells me if 30% have, I mean, 30 of them have a cat, then 20 of them don't have a cat. Okay? Now it says we're going to fill in the top row. So these are the rows, okay, these are rows. And so it says of the students who have a cat, okay, so 30 people had a cat, 70% have a dog. So 70% of 30 have a dog. So again, we're gonna take 7 tenths and times it by 30, and that gets us 21. So that's, it's cat and dog, that goes here. And then I'm gonna take 30 minus 21, 
and we get nine. And so that means nine of the people who have a cat do not have a dog. It says of the students who do not have a cat, so that's this number. Okay, now we're gonna fill the second row. So 75% of not have a cat, 20, have a dog. So we're gonna go 75 hundredths times 20. Okay, 75 hundredths times 20, we get 15. So that's of not a cat, 75% have a dog. So no cat, 15 of them have a dog. So then we'll go 20 minus 15. And we'll get five. Sorry, totally spaced out, I apologize. We'll get five. And now I'll go here. Now, it says fill in the last row. All we have to do is add up these columns. So we would go 21 plus 15 and get 36. And then we would do 9 plus 5 and get 14. And we just filled in a two-way table. And we would always check these two just to make sure they all add up. So 36 plus 14, we need to make sure it actually does equal 50, which it does. Okay, so that is how you take your information and fill in a table. It might help if you follow these steps also for future, but um, underlining the important things, right, making sure we change our percentage to decimals is really important too. All right, so the data from 200 middle school and high school students were collected. So they put the 200 total right here. Um, we're asked whether or not they have visited at least one national park. Is there an association between being a high school student and visiting a national park? So we're specifically looking for high school students. Okay, so high school students visiting a national park. So remember when we did the first one, we first go look at how many First, my pen stop. How many visit a national park first? We want to find the relative frequency of that. So relative frequency of visiting national park. Just that. So if we do that, we use our 105 with our 200, right? So we're going to go 105 over 200. And all you have to do is grab a calculator and do 105 divided by 200. We get a decimal, um, which will then get me, the decimal is this. And so if we times this by 100, we get 52 and 5 tenths percent. So it, you're, if, for visiting a national park out of all of the survey, it's 52% would be visiting a national park. So then, then we compare to high school students. So here's my high school students, okay, 80%, and we compare it to that, the total of them, right, to see. So it's the same idea when we did it here. I first did this one, and then I looked at curfew and, not, and national park, right, curfew and chores, and I compared it to that total. So I'm now looking at visited national park, but compared to their total. So if you notice I went left to right here as well um, and here we went down so then my other ratio was also down so they should be comparative like that. So now we're going to find relative frequency of high schooler and national park and so we would do 80 over 120 Again, I'm just going to take my calculator, divide 80 by 120. And this decimal actually comes out as a repeating decimal, but I'm going to still just times it by 100. We can round it to approximately 66 and 7 tenths, we can even say. And so since, again, the percentage goes up, Right, 66 and six, seven tenths, or six tenths, I'm gonna put seven tenths because I did round it. Since it's greater 
than just visiting a national park, we would say yes, there's obviously a relationship because just fitting it, visiting a national park is 52%, but visit being a high schooler and visiting a national park goes up. And so there is obviously a relationship between that because their percentage is getting larger, right? It's the same idea here. You're more likely, right? Same idea we had that 50%, we can add these to your notes if you want, go back, add this. This is the other reason, is that since 50% is greater than the 20%, the initial, that is why there's a relationship, right? It's, you're more likely to visit a national park if you are now a high schooler because the percentage has clearly gone up. And remember, we always check the, the secondary question. I know that's confusing. We always check this one first and then the two together second. All right, so the results of a survey at a school are shown. Is there an association between being a boy and being left-handed? Okay, so again, we always check the second one first. So being left-handed always gets checked first. So relative frequency of left-handed. So people who are left-handed, it's 24% out of a total of 240. So we would do 24, not percent, sorry about that, I keep saying percent, over 240. So 24 divided by 240 is 10% 10 or 10 10, 1 tenth. I times it by 100 and I get 10%. So 10% of these people are left-handed. So then we wanna look at boys that are left-handed, all right, and compare it to the total. So it is relative frequency of being a boy left-handed. It would be 14 out of 140. Well, oddly enough, it's actually equal. So 10% equals 10%. And since there is no change, they don't get, there's no, you're not more likely to be left-handed if you are a boy. So there's actually no relationship, okay? For it to be a relationship, there has to be a growth in it, right? Like it has to be a difference and there is no difference. So since they are equal to each other, there is no association between being a boy and being left-handed. You're not more likely to be left-handed if you're a boy, okay? So since they're equal, it's no relationship. All right, so the main thing that I want you to remember when checking associations, so checking associations, First, check or find relative frequency of second statement. I'm gonna make sure I spell this correctly and you can write all this down after I'm done typing because I gotta make it a little smaller too. Um, then, and then we'll go check or second find relative frequency of both together. We'll go third, compare relative frequencies. All right, I'm gonna make this font smaller so you guys can actually see it. Let's see if I can get, there we go, all right. So we, to check our associations, we first find the relative frequency of the second statement, right? We always check, you know, it said left-handed, we check that second or first. Then second thing we do is find the relevant frequency of both of them, to both statements together. So maybe I'll put that both statements together. And then third, we compare the relative frequencies. All right, so all you have to do down below is to complete this two-way table. Um, so it gave you some of the information. I'll give you a hint. You're just gonna need to do some subtracting and adding. No percents, no decimals. You're only adding and subtracting to fill in the rest of these boxes, okay? So um, that's my hint for you. Just do some adding and subtracting. You don't have to worry about any percentages. All right, adios until next time.